There's nothing more majestic than a well-maintained mustache. And maybe you're asking yourself, what does that have to do with fantasy football, Jake? Well, easy. In this episode, we're talking about some mustache players that you can find late in your fantasy football drafts. What is going on, Headliner Nation? Jake, Fantasy Headliners. Hopefully everybody's doing well out there today. Where, yes, we're talking about some players that you may want to stash late in fantasy football drafts towards the bottom of your roster. Not going to say these guys are must-have sleepers or anything like that. These are just some guys with some potential, right? That maybe you can get after round 10 in your fantasy football drafts that could provide some pretty decent value at that price because the risk is minimal, right? You're not going to be reliant on these guys on a weekly basis. However, they could definitely be a pleasant surprise for you here this year. I got five names we're going to be talking about. Before I get into this list, just a quick reminder, our draft guide is for sale, $19.99 for pre-order. It's scheduled to drop July 1st. So head over to the website, thefantasyheadliners.com, and get signed up for that right now. And we'll go ahead and kick it off right here with the running back position. We're going to be talking about Gus Edwards of the Baltimore Ravens first. He is back in Baltimore on a one-year deal and you know Baltimore likes themselves some Gus Edwards. We've seen it in the past with some of his usage at times. But one thing, if anything, that you can say about Gus Edwards is he's consistent. And everybody loves consistency, especially in the NFL. Now, over the last three years, he's had just about 130 carries a year and hasn't had less than 700 yards rushing in a season. Out of all three of those years, you kind of know what you're going to get with the guy, right? He's averaging right around five yards per carry, which is top 10 in the NFL. He, You know he's not going to be overly involved in the passing game. But, I mean, come on, let's be completely honest. Who really is involved in the passing game in Baltimore these days? And But we know they're going to run. And they're going to run a lot. And they're going to run really well in Baltimore. On average, last year... They ran the ball 34.7 times per game, number one in the NFL. Now, Gus Edwards can also make the big play happen as well, right? He had nine runs of over 15 yards, seventh most among all running backs last year in the NFL as well. Mark Ingram, no longer in town, uh, added pass catching weapons like Rashad Bateman on the outside, hopefully draws a few defenders outside of the box because Gus Edwards saw stacked boxes a lot. In fact, he saw them on 33.3% of his touches, which was ninth most in the NFL. You have a solid complimentary running back with J.K. Dobbins. Pair him up with uh, the quarterback running ability of Lamar Jackson. Gus Edwards could find some success once again here this year. As of right now, he's currently sitting at running back 43 overall in the consensus overall rankings. An injury to J.K. Dobbins? This guy is borderline fringe running back one territory. Uh, I would definitely like that. Plus, you get some weekly value, right? That's the greatest thing late in fantasy football drafts. Find somebody who has that super high ceiling potential if an injury happens, but also has weekly value that you can plug into a flex spot early in the season if you're looking for somebody to start uh, at an as-needed basis. What about another running back, though? What about Daryl Williams of the Kansas City Chiefs? I mean, really, everybody only wants to talk about CEH in Kansas City, right? And deservedly so. I do expect him to take a step forward here this year. I really do. I think the the production that people were hoping for in 2020 happens in 2021. But we also know this offense has zero issues with splitting some touches in the backfield, right? Le'Veon Bell, gone. Damian Williams, gone. Daryl Williams is pretty much in line to be the number two as of right now on this depth chart. Now, yes, I remember. I haven't forgotten. Darwin Thompson, still a thing, still buried on the depth chart, but somebody with some super high potential if it were to go to him. But as of right now, we've seen Daryl Williams kind of be next man up in this offense. We saw by his utilization the end of 2020. He's able to catch passes out of the backfield. He's a little bit bigger of a running back than CEH, right? We saw CEH struggle on the goal line at times last year, which some had to do with the offensive line play. But Daryl Williams is definitely somebody who could be utilized with that bigger body and pounded in on the goal line. What happens if something happens to CEH? What if he goes down? Sure, more than likely it's going to be a committee, but all of a sudden the potential you know, skyrockets for Daryl Williams. He becomes somebody who's almost maybe a must-start guy on a weekly basis, depending on what the matchup is. Now, obviously we can't say, hey, draft a guy in hopes that the, the starter goes down. That's not what you're looking at. We're looking for that value. And Daryl Williams is still somebody who will see weekly touches. He's not somebody who I'd really want to throw in a flex spot to start the year, unless you're in one of those huge leagues with like four flex spots or 16 team leagues, something like that. He's a great deep round stash, a potential lottery pick, but he needs some things to happen. It's definitely a name to pay attention to. 
All right, now we'll move on to the wide receiver position, the catchers of balls. And let's talk about Gabriel Davis, wide receiver of the Buffalo Bills. But one thing is really puzzling about this. Emmanuel Sanders goes to Buffalo, signs with the Bills, and all of a sudden, everybody just wants to forget about Gabriel Davis. Don't forget about Gabriel Davis. He was one of the leaders and targets on this team down the stretch of 2020. He had four touchdowns over his last six games played and had seven overall for the season. I mean, come on. He only had 35 receptions in his rookie year. Seven of them were for touchdowns. Uh, that's a pretty great percentage, not something he can sustain by any means. But now John Brown is gone. And he leaves behind some big play potential, right? That's kind of what John Brown was there for, right? Those big plays. He wasn't really the, you know, go and sit at the first down marker possession style receiver. But luckily, luckily Gabriel Davis can kind of fill that role pretty well that John Brown is leaving behind, especially in my opinion, more so than Emmanuel Sanders. Emmanuel Sanders, more of that guy that can help you move the chains. The big plays, that's going to be Gabriel Davis. He averaged 17.1 yards per reception in 2020, seventh best among all wide receivers. He also had an average target distance of 15.4 yards down the field. Also, seventh best in the NFL among all wide receivers. We know he has a strong arm quarterback. He has a below average run game that we know is not going to eat up a whole lot of touches in the backfield. His second year in this offense with an actual offseason to work, right? Remember that last year coming in as a rookie, he didn't get the rookie camps. He didn't get the offseason workouts. Now he is. Now he's going to have time to grow in this offense and could really take a huge step forward here this year. Right now, he's currently wide receiver 67. 67th overall, just at the wide receiver position. Uh, yeah, uh, that's definitely something I'll take a look at because this guy may be going undrafted in some leagues this year and the potential upside as of right now, possibly on the opposite side of Stephon Diggs, who's going to require a lot of defensive attention. Don't forget about Gabriel Davis whatsoever in Buffalo. What about Josh Reynolds of now the Tennessee Titans? So he left LA, no longer a member of the Los Angeles Rams, finds himself in Tennessee, and this could actually be pretty good for Josh Reynolds. We saw decent production from him at times in LA. He just could never get consistent volume in that offense, constantly having to worry about Cooper Cup or Robert Woods or Tyler Higbee at times, or he just never really got that full workload. Well, now targets are available. I guess you could say in Tennessee, like, like a lot of them are available in Tennessee. Corey Davis, John U. Smith, Adam Humphreys, they're all gone, right? I mean, Josh Reynolds is only on a one-year prove-it deal there in Tennessee, and that could result in a pretty nice surprise for those of us that want to stash him late in fantasy football drafts. I mean, you have a run-first offense. We know that the defense has to go into that game focusing on the run game against Tennessee. You have a stud wide receiver on the opposite side to take away that defensive attention with A.J. Brown. You have no dominant tight end in this offense unless you think Anthony Fersker is really dominant. He's solid, wouldn't call him dominant. Plus, then you have an athletic wide receiver here in Josh Reynolds at six foot three that can find the end zone. We've seen him do that before. Right now, he's currently sitting at wide receiver 72 in the consensus rank. 72 wide receiver 72. He's not being drafted hardly anywhere. He's definitely a name to pay attention to. He's really being overlooked. And don't make that mistake yourself. Somebody going into an offense with this much potential targets available, and we've seen him produce in the NFL before. I mean, what do you have to lose? The risk is minimal. Pay attention to Josh Reynolds late in drafts. Uh, last guy here on the list. How about a tight end? The football kind. Of course, Adam Troutman, tight end of the New Orleans Saints. I mean, let's be honest, right? I mean, finding a great late round option at the tight end position is probably harder than middle school algebra. I mean, am I right for all the parents out there doing homeschool math? It's tough. I don't remember all that. But really, the only thing you can do late in drafts at the tight end position is just look for opportunity, right? Who out there has the opportunity to get some targets in an offense? I mean, you don't need a whole lot to really become a tight end one here in fantasy football. Now, New Orleans did go out. They brought in Nick Vanette, but they're going to give last year's third round pick and Adam Troutman an opportunity to get to have a shot at that job here this year. Jared Cook. He's gone. He's no longer there. Emmanuel Sanders, he's gone. We just talked about him. He's in Buffalo, so there's going to be some targets up for grabs in this offense. Now, Adam Troutman isn't some slam dunk must-have at the end of drafts. Absolutely not. But he does play in a division that's going to score a lot of points, and that's going to force the New Orleans Saints to continue to throw the ball all four quarters more times than not. Jared Cook did see... 15 red zone targets last year, 11th most among all tight ends, and he scored seven touchdowns, which was the sixth most among all tight ends in the NFL. We live in an era right now where, like, 
700 yards, six touchdowns, like that's a tight end one in fantasy football. Adam Troutman has a path to targets in an offense that's going to have to throw. Who's throwing the ball? Is it Taysom Hill? Is it Jameis Winston? As far as fantasy football numbers and you know potential goes, we want it to be Jameis Winston just so we have to throw the ball more often. That's something we need to pay attention to, something we need to see. As of right now, though, to have that big-bodied tight end option, an athletic tight end, in the red zone for the Saints isn't a bad thing whatsoever. He's currently sitting at tight end 30, so ain't nobody touching Adam Troutman. If you're in a deep league and you're looking for a lottery ticket, just looking to looking to throw darts at this point, Adam Troutman is a name that we need to remember, at least during our fantasy football drafts. All right, so those are a few late round stashes here for 2021 fantasy football. And there's a lot of great options. And as the offseason progresses, we're going to get into some must-have sleepers and some guys that we really want to pay attention to and grab during our drafts this season. These guys are just names to kind of pay attention to. Maybe you're at the end of your drafts and you're just looking for some great upside for your bench. That's what these guys uh, could potentially bring to your fantasy football squads. But we want to know what you think out there, the community, Headliner Nation. Leave a comment down below in the comment section and let us know who are some of those late round stashes that you're looking for here this year. Not must have guys, but just guys that you're looking at and remembering as your draft progresses. We'd love to have those conversations with you. If you look back over our past few weeks of videos, we're doing our best to answer almost every comment on every video here in the offseason. We'd love to communicate with you guys. That's what makes this community so much better than all of the others. We want to involve you in it. So that's that's what you're looking for. Hit the subscribe button. You found yourself a new home. We greatly appreciate that support. Hopefully you guys have a great rest of your day and we'll talk to you later.